Okay, so we know we need to plan for availability in Azure. How do we go about doing that? And the mechanism Microsoft uses for that are availability sets. Before we can kind of you know decide how to use them, let's understand our potential for VM impact first. First of all, we have planned maintenance. This is when Microsoft needs to patch or say do some firmware upgrades on the underlying hardware that your VM is running on and they need to evacuate your VM. In most cases, this will happen using their live migration technology. They will simply move your virtual machine from one host to another. But on other occasions, they do need to shut down your virtual machine in order to do this maintenance because live migration won't work for whatever reason, and so you need to account for that. The second one is unplanned hardware maintenance. This is when Microsoft detects using, say, their monitoring systems that a failure may be about to occur on the underlying host. And again, kind of like planned maintenance, they need to move your virtual machine or sometimes very quickly, they have to shut all the virtual machines down, do the maintenance and then bring that host back up. And then finally, we have unexpected downtime. This is when there's a catastrophic failure to the underlying hardware and you're essentially forced. Your VM is you know, shut down immediately, you know, not gracefully, and you know, the VM will eventually be powered on on another machine, but your application will receive an outage. The way to solve this is using availability sets. This allows us to group two or more machines into a set, and they're basically separated out based on two things, fault domains and update domains. If we think of fault domains, first of all, this is essentially when we have a rack that has its own power, its own networking connectivity, and we can have up to three fault domains in an availability set. So if we think of our virtual machines, if we have three virtual machines in a particular tier, which we'll get into more in a moment, they can be spread out amongst those fault domains if we've used three fault domains. If there's an outage to one, the virtual machines on the other fault domains will be unaffected and eventually the virtual machine that had the outage on the first fault domain would come back up once Microsoft resolves the underlying issue or just simply moves your machine to another host. In addition, we have update domains. So think of these a little bit differently. Microsoft has to patch a whole series of hosts, but they will do them sequentially, and they won't patch the same update domains at the same time. Now they allow you up to 20 update domains, so your virtual machines will be spread out amongst those update domains in your availability set. You don't control the specific order. So for example, if you've got three update domains, UD0, UD1, UD2, we know that they won't happen at the same time. Again, this is the patching of the underlying hosts, not your virtual machine patches themselves. But we know that UD0 won't happen at the same time as UD2. Uh, but UD2 could happen before UD0. This isn't an ordering system. It's simply a separation. If we think of planning for availability in a little bit more detail, the other thing we need to think about is what goes into an availability set. Well, it's very important that you put your tiers into separate availability sets. Think of it like this. We would have an availability set for our web tier, an availability set for our app tier, and an availability set for our data tier. Now think of it just from a fault domain perspective. We know now in our web tier that if we had three fault domains, those three servers would be separated out between three underlying fault domains. The reason for this is if we combined everything, let's say we put our data tier and our app tier and our web tier all together, we could be in a situation where all of our data VMs are on the same fault domain because again, we've only got three fault domains. Microsoft's going to spread all of those machines out amongst the fault domains and update domains as well, obviously. And you know, if we've got too much in their group together, they could just, you know, we could just have all of our data machines on the same fault domain, and that doesn't really help us from an availability standpoint. So use this model whenever you're trying to decide you know, what availability sets to use. And there's definitely a lot of questions, at least when I did the exam on this, they'll give you some scenarios on, he has so many web servers, so many app servers, so many data servers, they'll describe the scenario and you have to decide how you group the servers out.